On behalf of Beulah Baptist Church, um, just allow me for just a moment to welcome you here today. If you're a family from out of town or friends uh, who aren't familiar with this faith family, just let me tell you that they uh, they love you and they certainly love Tammy Duhon. And so today, as we as we celebrate her life and remember her, and uh, and we hope to provide hope future that you come from Christ alone, I hope and pray that you know this church family loves you very much. Uh, I had the privilege to serve as uh, a pastor here and Tammy's pastor for 10 of the 30 years she was a member here. That's, that's saying a lot these days for someone to be faithful and a part of a church family for that long, but Tammy uh, was and uh, dearly loved. And so uh, let's go ahead and begin word of prayer and just pray that God would bless this time together and that he would give glory and honor and everything we say and do and encourage me for to come to all of us today by uh, the, the work of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Lord, we love you and thank you for the opportunity to be here today even the honor to be able to be a part of the service that would um, remember uh, Tammy's life and uh, really the legacy that she's left behind. I pray today it would be. I know it's so difficult to think of um, these moments in terms like celebration because, uh, God, this is this is uh, definitely sorrowful. We're filled with uh, sorrow in, in the sense of our loss uh, temporarily, but God, I also can't help but remember the beautiful smile on Tammy's face every single time I ever saw her. And I, can't, I can't imagine that we can't remember that about her today. I pray you just give us joy in the midst of sorrow. Help us, uh, help us have uh, wonderful uh, moments of encouragement, even in the midst of this battle, we pray. Uh, speak to us, and I pray you would, even now, give us hope that comes only through Jesus Christ. We pray in Jesus' name we pray.
turnout in this game. And uh, she touched a lot, a lot of people. And uh, we are just welcoming you here today. Thank you so much for coming. And Baker, thank you for allowing me to be a part of this team. Because I loved her. I loved her so much. I appreciate her so much and all that she had done. We love you. And we will continue to be in our hearts and our thoughts and our prayers in the coming days and weeks. A lot of first things will be coming up for you guys, birthdays, Thanksgiving, Christmas, without your name. And God is faithful. In Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30, it says, Come to me, all ye who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my load is light. I encourage your family in the coming days to, to lean lean very heavily into our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So how do you talk about a woman in your life whose email was crazy T, 524-68? Crazy T, we were talking with my son Benjamin last night, and she taught him in Sunday school, and he says, I didn't call her Miss Tammy, I called her Crazy T. That is not how I taught my son to act for the Sunday school. I'm sure he followed in his father's footsteps and everything. But I would just like to share with you guys today, just very quickly, just some thoughts, some scriptures that came to my mind over the past couple of days, and just some memories that I had to my love for her. Candy knew the one to whom she belonged. And that is Jesus Christ. There was never any doubt in my mind who she belonged to. 2 Timothy 1.12 says, For this reason I also suffer these things, but I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until that day. So I know that she trusted him, and there was no doubt she was convinced of that fact. I don't know when Miss Tammy accepted Jesus Christ as her Savior. I don't know the date. But there was never any doubt in my mind that she had done that very thing. I had the privilege of visiting her many times in her home, the home in hospital visits and stuff like that. And many of those times she expressed to me her trust and reliance upon the Lord. She knew that he had a divine purpose for her life. And despite all her health issues, she kept trying to encourage everyone around her. In all those visits that I've been to her, in time for prayer and stuff like that, I never, never, and I can honestly say that, never heard her complain about the illness, anything, any of her health issues. She never complained to me about that. She always pointed us, and our conversation was always turned towards Jesus Christ. So that was just her, her legacy. She knew who was in control. And she trusted Jesus completely. Tindy was a very, very strong and well-grounded woman of God. She loved reading and studying God's Word. And she was in my wife's deep group with Gene Winslet and Leslie Sanchez. And even though there was many times because of her health that she couldn't attend, she continued to persevere in her study and reading God's Word. And she loved her group of friends in her deep group. One of the verses that we memorized in our deep group was Joshua 189. And it says, This book of the law shall not depart from your lips, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything according to what is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have success. And this is what I thought of Tammy. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. 
Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And ten years ago, she lived that outright. She not only knew the one to whom she belonged, she loved to serve the one to whom she belonged. She loved serving. Colossians 3, 23 and 24 says, Whatever you do, do your work heartily as for the Lord rather than for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance. It is the Lord God whom you serve. Another verse that came to mind, Matthew 5, 16. Let your light shine among men by such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Tammy didn't look to get any kind of glory for her own self. She just wanted to bring honor and glory and just point people to Jesus. She was a Sunday school teacher here for, in the children's department for many, many years. In fact, all four of my guys, children, went through her class. They were all taught by her during the time that we were here. And they had very fond memories of her. Like I told you, Benjamin loved calling her crazy too. And God just remember her smile and the way she acted. She, she invested her life into the lives of those children. She knew the importance of instilling God's word into the hearts and the minds of her children. She loved all of her sons and kids and loved them with a sacrificial kind of love. She could never do enough for each one of them. I remember on many Sundays, as I was standing outside, seeing her get out of the car and take the arm of Chris or take the arm of Ray and have to be helped in. Because you could tell just by looking at her that she was not feeling good. And there's many other people that would have just said, it's not worth it to go through all this and go to church. But Tammy knew the importance of being in church and the, the life-altering way that she could touch children and invest in their lives. And she loved those kids more and endured the pain and suffering because of that. She was also a member of our, our choir and uh, absolutely loved to sing. And many times I would call upon her when we were doing some type of a play or something like that to do a lot of the rock painting. You know, in, inside of his head are all, lots, all kinds of ideas and things that I could picture in my mind. And she was able to take all that chaos and bring it down and do exactly what I wanted her to do. And she painted some of the greatest props for us. And she spent many, many hours up here on her hands and knees painting things for us, for our plays and musical stuff that we've been doing. I appreciate her so much for doing that for us. First Corinthians 15, 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your toil is not in vain in the Lord, not in tain, she did everything that she did in the Lord. And that's why I think the Lord just blessed her and used her. Because she was willing to endure so many things and willing to put in purpose. Once again, with all of her medical issues, she proved herself to be steadfast, immovable, and she always abounded in the work of the Lord. So she knew the one to whom she belonged. She loved to serve the one to whom she belonged. And last but not least, she loved to worship the one to whom she belonged. And that was Jesus Christ. Psalm 59, 16, and 17 tells us, But as for me, I shall sing of thy strength. Yes, I, wish, I shall joyfully sing of thy loving kindness in the morning. For thou hast been my stronghold and a refuge in the day of my distress. O oh, my strength, I will sing praises to thee. For God is my stronghold, the God who shows me loving kindness. And I can just hear Tammy quote that right now. I can hear her saying that and praying that and singing that back to the Lord. 
that he was her strength, that she was in joy for him because of his love and kindness, that he was her stronghold, her refuge, and the day of her distress, and we all know she went through many distresses within her life. Stronghold, because he was the guy who showed her love and kindness. She loved coming to worship the church. We were all her family. Yeah, she accepted each one of us as a part of her family, the friends. And she wanted, wanted more than anything to be here with us. I remember mentioning that she was a member of the choir, but there came a time that you know, it actually became too difficult for her to climb up the stairs to get up to the choir house. So I remember her sitting right over here on my left, in that front row. And she would worship with us. Sometimes she would be able to stand in some ways. Other times she would have to sit through the whole service. But she was here because she knew the importance of being here to worship her Lord and her Savior, Jesus Christ. The family has uh, asked me this morning to sing a song I can only imagine. You know what? Can you no longer has to imagine what it's going to be like because she was there. She is there in heaven. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verses 7 and 8 says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are of good courage, I say, and prefer rather to be absent from the body and to be at home with the Lord. Cain is at home with the Lord today. She has seen the face of her Savior. If you can just imagine, looked into his eyes. Daisy and I were talking a while ago, her belt was pink. She ran in that because she has not been able to run for a long time. That's right. She ran into those days, into the arms of Jesus Christ. She has a perfectly, perfectly healed body. With absolutely no pain. Just like the song says, I'm sure she knelt right down and worshiped God in all of who he is. Singing, Hallelujah. One of them. And just. I can only 
Uh, my knowledge of her walk with Jesus is unwavering, which is a lot to be said in our day and time. And so Tammy was was all about Jesus, but she was all about family, just as Terry has said. She loved her kids. She loved her grandchildren. I, I know for certain. She loved Ray. Uh, she loved uh, she loved everyone. And I tell you, it, it is uh, amazing. Uh, the obituary called uh, called her Granny T. Granny T. Uh, perhaps uh, it says her favorite role in life. I love that. That's, that's beautiful. When people are faithful to the church, the pastor can definitely get to know them a little bit better, maybe pretty well uh, better than others. Uh, but let me say, Tammy was faithful to her church, just as Terry has said, faithful to her Savior. She was consistent uh, for the 10 years that I was here. Unless she was in the hospital, she literally was in her church. She was faithful to attend. Um, but it's personal for me, uh, all three of our boys actually were in her Sunday school class. And so, just like, again, Terry said, it's so awesome. I, I, there's a handful of people in my life that I can say that about who have consistently influenced my entire family. And, um, and they all love her. I mean, absolutely love her. And so, uh, that was just such a, a great memory to remember she had influenced all of our boys. Uh, in that investment of, of Sunday school. She loved uh, our children and we knew it. She invested them regularly and she cared about them. Uh, but here are a few things that I know about Tammy, just as I've thought over the last couple of days. She, she loved life. If you knew Tammy, she absolutely just loved life and she loved people. It was undeniable the more you were around it, the more you knew that. Uh, she didn't mind telling you what she thought. Was she straightforward to you guys too? I mean, she didn't mind telling you what she thought, but it's funny. She could tell you the worst stuff with a smile on her face, you know? I mean, she could shoot it straight to you, but somehow you could walk away saying, I think she insulted you, but I'm not really sure, you know? Well, she made me like it. Um, but her smile was contagious. Her joy was just something that seemed to rub off on you. She really was the life of the party. I read that, and that's so true. Uh, she loved to laugh, and that's why I'm going to tell this terribly embarrassing story because I think that she would really enjoy it today. I got up this morning in the hotel room, and I looked at my suit. She would love this. And I, I just praise the Lord. I actually evaluate, examined my clothes. I, I, I looked at my pants, and here I am three and a half hours from our house, and there's a hole in my pants the size of a softball. Amen? <laughs> that is not what you want to see when you're in a hotel room before a funeral. Um, I did get it fixed, right? Yes, all right. <laughs> So uh, I, I'm thankful. But she would have probably loved that. She would have got a kick out of it and gave me a hard time for a long time to come. So I, and I'm glad that I'm recording this. That way nobody at my home church will know that now. But anyway, she, she was one of the few who, when I visited the hospital, I literally felt better when I left. You know, usually you go, when people are at the worst, people are low. I mean, you need to encourage them. You need to lift them up, you know. I genuinely um, always felt better when I left being around him. And I think that is that is a gift that God gave her, just to be able to, to love people well. Tammy lived a life filled with purpose. She lived a life filled with joy. And it's so important to remember the joy wasn't based on circumstances. If it was, then she would not have been filled with joy sometimes. I mean, there have been plenty of excuses for her not to have a smile on her face, but, but she found joy in what mattered most. She was filled with the joy of the Lord. Galatians 5 tells us that actual joy is a fruit of the Spirit. We certainly know that. And in I 8, 8, uh, 8 verse 10 says the joy of the Lord is our strength. And I do think that's what got her through some of those terrible circumstances. She wasn't defined by the circumstances. She didn't allow her health problems to define her. Uh, on a day like today, we're not focusing on all of the bad things that that she experienced. What defines her to us is that she was a woman of faith who loved Jesus and was filled with the joy of the Lord. So that was who she was. That was her identity. She walked through all of those things. She actually overcame all of those things. She claimed victory in the midst of terrible circumstances, oftentimes. Because she lived in the joy of the Lord. So Tammy was strong in the Lord because she was filled with his joy. 
And that's such a, a man is such a reminder for us. In fact, it's so fitting. I'm preaching this passage this coming Sunday, Philippians chapter 4, and verse 4 through 7. Listen to what the words of Paul were to the church of Philippi. He said, Rejoice in the Lord always, right? And just in case we missed it, again, Paul says, I'll say, Rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. What's reasonableness mean? Your level headedness, your, your, your patience. Like actually think about things in an eternal perspective. Think from a level headed, a reasonable perspective that today can be understood that all she was walking through was temporary. And she's now in the permanent peace of Jesus Christ. She's in victory. And so there's no tear that we're shedding today for her. If we're sorrowful, it is sorrowful for us because Tammy has claimed victory. Today is now realizing what we can only imagine. And so uh, the Lord is at hand, it says. Paul said, don't be anxious for anything. How did she live in the joy of the Lord? She wasn't anxious. She chose to, to live in the victory of joy instead of the anxiety of the circumstances that surround us in this world. Don't be anxious for anything. But everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And then it says, verse 7, The peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. How did Tammy do it? She actually just lived her faith. She just allowed her faith to define her. She allowed her faith in Jesus to give her confidence and strength over the circumstances that oftentimes um, cause people to even doubt their faith. And um, I, I was talking with someone just a moment ago talking about we always have a reason to complain. And the fact of the matter is, many of us don't even need a reason to complain, right? I mean, we, we complain about everything. And, and we ought to be convicted in, in a day like today when we're remembering someone like Tammy who, who really lived above her complaints. She lived above her circumstances. She lived in the joy of the Lord based on what He'd already done for her. And the eternal hope and the eternal circumstances that she knew she'd already had because of her faith in Jesus Christ. Tammy lived a life filled with joy, but also expectation. She had a, a, a hope in the future. See, Tammy always testified her faith in Jesus, but it wasn't just a faith for now. And I think that's so important for us, right? It is a faith for now. It gets us through the circumstances. It, it helps us overcome anxieties and difficulties and struggle. But more than anything, look, it's a faith for tomorrow. I mean, this is, a, this is a faith that we have in Jesus that gives us an expectation and a hope in what would otherwise be hopeless. I mean, think about it for just a minute. We are legitimately surrounded by hopelessness every single day in this world. And I mean, I've been saying that for the last 20-something years as a pastor. It has never been more true than, than this day. I mean, you, you don't even have to turn on the news. You know, go to your neighbor. <laughs> Look in the mirror. You're, we're surrounded by discouragement. We're surrounded by bad news. We're surrounded by hopelessness. If there's anything Christians need to see today is that our hope is not in this world. Our hope is not in this government. Our hope is not in this life. We, we don't want to say goodbye to a beautiful woman at the age of 53 that we love dearly. We don't want that. We don't want that. But, but to live is Christ. To die is gain. And so we do believe. And by faith we have great confidence knowing that our expectation and our hope is not in this world. It's easy to say that preacher on Sunday morning, but it's harder on you. And I get it. I totally agree. But that's what faith is all about. Is that our hope is in Jesus Christ who, who ultimately has has conquered death, hell, and the grave. And so today is a day of great hope. It's not a day of discouragement eternally, not for Tammy, because she knew Jesus Christ as her Savior. So walking with her and her family through these years, and I know Terry, even for the last six years in my absence, and others in this room, the fact of the matter is we have, we have lived and seen her live out a demonstration of her faith in Jesus. And, uh, and the, the fact of the matter is, Tammy was not afraid to die. She, she may have not expected for this to be her time, nor did we. But we know this, it did not catch God by surprise. The fact is that she is now in the secure arms 
of her father in heaven. John chapter 10, verse 28 through 30 says, Jesus speaking, Now give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. I want you to think about this for just a moment. He is not just holding her. He will never let her go. That is a good promise. Uh, no one can snatch them out of my hand. My Father, Jesus said, who has given them to me is greater than all. And no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. And so Tammy lived in great expectation of a better day with Jesus Christ. And so it's good for us to remember today, on this day, that there's a better day coming. No matter how discouraging it gets, no matter how hopeless it may feel, no matter how discouraged we may be because of the circumstances, even these circumstances today, the most undesirable perhaps that we could ever imagine, the fact is there's a better day coming if you know Jesus. There's a better day coming. In the midst of hopelessness, you have hope in Him. Here's why. Because He has given us many promises. But I want to read one more to you. John chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. Jesus says, Let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. I will receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. And then Thomas, who had to have been a Southern Baptist, said, Lord, we do not know where you're going, and how can we possibly know the way? Doubting Thomas. Jesus said to him, perhaps the most important words for everybody in this room, the most significant words, maybe, for the human race. Jesus said, I am the way, Thomas. I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There are an awful lot of people trying an awful lot of different ways to find peace and to try to find hope and to try to find eternal life. But there is only one way. There is only one truth. There is only one life. And Tammy found him, Jesus. So to family and friends of Tammy, you can trust God completely in the midst of all of this. I know that's easy, easy to say. It's easier said than done. And, and I know that. But the fact is we can trust Him. You can trust Him with the things you can't understand today. You can trust Him even when you're mad, angry, confused, frustrated. You can trust Him. Don't let this turn you away from Him. Let this Pull you in to him. Because this is when you need him the most. Don't try to understand everything or try to rationalize things or events. I've learned over the years there are some things that I will never understand. Some things will never make sense to me this side of heaven. And there are many things I cannot even begin to understand or explain to other people. And people who try oftentimes prove themselves to be fools. We must learn to trust God. Proverbs 35 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And do not lean your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him. And He will direct your paths. Some translations say, He will make your paths straight. In the midst of crookedness, in the midst of confusion. I can remember as a little kid. Back before these four lane highways from Rockmark to Atlanta. Y'all remember back in those days when Atlanta Highway uh, from Rockmark was a two lane mountain road? And I remember riding on those mountain roads, and man, I tell you what, you go around one of those curves, and you couldn't really see what was around the curve. You know, it was uh, very difficult, it was dangerous. My daddy, the teaching me to drive, would always say, if you're careful, you go around a curve, you gotta slow down because you're always coming, and you don't know. Um, you know, if there's something dangerous, something sitting in the middle of the road, around the next curve. But boy, when you're on a straightaway, you can see way ahead. You can even see if you know, a deer was running out in front of you way before you get there. And I think, I think about that when I read Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Because here's what God does for us. He makes our path straight. He helps us to understand, even when we are confused and we are frustrated, maybe even when we're angry, He helps us understand that He's in control. And we can trust Him. And even when our roads are curvy, and we can't see what's coming next, we must 
trust in Him. I want to pray for you um, again, and then Anthony, during this prayer, if you want to come up, Anthony knows that. Anthony's going to read a, a poem that's special uh, to the family. Uh, even Lord, we love you. We thank you for the opportunity to give us to be here. I pray again that you give the family strength and encouragement. Even now, I pray you bless me.
for my grandbabies, laughing and talking with family and friends, and from love of drawing and painting, the talent I got from my mom. From mom saying fudge sickles and sugar foot, and dad saying it's hard to be humble when you practically perfect in every way. And it's hard to fly like an eagle when you're surrounded by turkeys. I am from my Beulah Baptist Church family, teaching Sunday school, sharing Jesus, my Lord and Savior, with everyone I can. I am from Norwalk, Connecticut, in my home in Georgia. The Jones and Solicitors, from Dad's meatball sauce and stuffing, and Mom's banana pudding and strawberry shortcake. I am from Daisy's blueberry lemon bun cake, sprinkled donuts, and sonic cherry slushes on a summer day. From Panama City Beach vacations, Gatlinburg and the sun filled cruises later in the morning. From You Are My Sunshine and getting the tomahawks at the Braves play. I am from Holiday making fun, Manny Hayes. And all the love in the world for my siblings, Billy, Tina, Cecilia, and Thomas. Lifelong companions and friends. I am from priceless memories and a well-lived well life and a legacy that lives on in my family, never to be forgotten. She's getting to worship like we all, all want to worship. So I want you to know that we thank you and we appreciate you for the love that you've shown us from the phone calls and the texts and the flowers and just being present. And if there's one thing that my mom loves, she loves that. Please look at the pictures that they were shown earlier in the world. I don't think I've ever seen my mom take a picture that she wasn't smiling. She loved taking pictures. There's a picture of uh, me and Daisy standing behind her in a recliner. And she goes, I want to take this picture. I want to say it was on her birthday. Or was that a party? Mother's Day. She said, I want to take a picture. I don't like pictures. <laughs> Why should we pictures? My mom has said she will never know Jesus. She, she will never know the love of Jesus. He is around mom at any length of time. He's seen the love of Jesus. 
if you love like Jesus. Thank you, Anthony. And that honestly is a beautiful transition into um, really the family's last request. And I would even say it's really Tammy's last request. I'd say out of, out of 50 funerals, there was generally one, and I'd say in 20 years, there's probably only been a handful of folks who have made this clear. But Tammy, Tammy's heart and her hope was that people who came to her funeral would hear the gospel. Now, arguably, you've already heard the gospel because you've heard the scriptures, you've heard the word of God very clearly, Jesus saying, I'm the way, the truth, and life. But I think she meant very clearly, I want people to know how to be saved. And so, I mean briefly. I know when a pastor says briefly, you think that's a lot, all right? But briefly, I, I, want, I, want you to, I want you to have an awareness that salvation is not about you earning anything. It's not about you being good enough. It's not about you working hard enough. It's not about you proving to God somehow that you can make it. Really, Christianity and salvation and following Jesus the way Tammy did is, is right the opposite. It's actually coming to Jesus in full recognition that you can. That you couldn't possibly earn it if you tried. That if it was a staircase, you're not good enough to even step one rung up the ladder. There's no possible way that this preacher has ever done one good work that would get me one inch higher toward heaven than I would have been otherwise. Here's the fact. Salvation in Christ, no matter what you've ever heard about Christianity, no matter how anybody's confused you about Christianity, coming to faith in Jesus is completely about you coming to full realization that you don't deserve that. That we're, we're sinners. I mean, if there's any one thing you've got to know to be saved, is that you don't deserve it. That, that we're imperfect people. And there's nobody, there's nobody that deserves Jesus' salvation. No man, no woman, no pastor, no Sunday school teacher deserves it. The scripture says in Romans 3.23, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There's none righteous. Romans 3 is none righteous. No, not one. Isaiah actually says our best, our righteousness it's like filthy rags to God. And so really, I know you might say, well, that's terrible news, Wayne. I mean, that's, that's terrible. Why would you tell us that? Because it's followed up with great news. See, we have to know we can. But the great news is that he did. See, Romans 5, 8 tells us that even though we were sinners, he loved us. Jesus, Romans 5, 8, Paul says, God demonstrated his love for us and that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. So, so Jesus didn't say, hey, I'm going to come and I'm going to die on the cross for all the good people. Had he done that, then none of us would have been saved because there were no good people. None of us deserved it. But Jesus came and he died for me, even though I didn't deserve it. He demonstrated that. Romans 5, 8, he demonstrated his love for me. He demonstrated his love for you. And while we were sinners, he died for us. And so what that does, it changes everything. It changes everything about how we understand salvation. So if we've been trying all of our life to be good enough for church people, you know, if we've been trying all of our life to prove to people that maybe one day, yeah, when I, when I get this cleaned up, or maybe when I, when I quit this bad habit, or when I become a good dad or a good mom or whatever, then, then I'm going to come to God because I, want, I know I've got I've to leave some stuff behind first. That is absolutely backwards. We, we can. And if you wonder why you can't overcome all of those things, it's because you're trying to do it in your own power. We can't do it. It's a God thing. It requires us to have strength and power that only He can give us. And so we've got to know we can't, but He did. He loves us. And Jesus did come. He did die on the cross for our sins. And so really that final thing is we've got to turn to Jesus in faith. Romans 10, 9 says, If we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in our heart that God raised Him from the dead, we will be saved. My former pastor from South Louisiana, John Dye, used to say there's 18 inches between heaven and hell for most people, the distance between their heads and their heart. Because there's an awful lot of people who can answer the question, who is Jesus' mom? You know, a lot of people can say, what city was, what town was Jesus born in? They know intellectually a lot of stuff about Jesus. They may even know John 3.16, so they know him here. 
but they don't know him here. So it's not just about this confession or verbal prayer that you pray, because the fact of the matter is I can say a uh, hundred times, I am a bodybuilder, I am a bodybuilder, I am a bodybuilder, but reality reminds me that is not true, amen? So verbal, verbal statements don't, don't make things true. It takes a heart commitment. We have to literally turn from our sin and ourselves and turn to a Savior who's done all of the work for us. And so you may say, well, wait a minute, I, I, okay, maybe that's news to me. I'm interested, but how, how do I do that? I, I'm, I'm going to lead you in a prayer, and, and I do this rarely because I don't want you to pray very verbally and have some kind of false sense of hope. So let me say this very clearly. If you pray a prayer with me today, if you, if you pray uh, out loud or in your heart the words that I'm going to pray, uh, I want you to understand if there's no transformation or change in your heart and life, then, then nothing changed. It's not salvation because 2 Corinthians 5, 17 is clear. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. All, all things become new. But I want you to have a chance. I want you to know that this is the kind of prayer that I lead people in when, when I lead them to Jesus. Is this, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I can't save myself. I'm hopeless without you. But I know that you love me. You love me enough to give me Jesus. And he died on the cross for my sins. And so as best as I know how, I repent of my sins. I turn from my sin and myself. And I want to turn to you today. And if you want to pray that prayer with me, here's, here's the, the reason I would do this today. First of all, you need the hope that you can find in Jesus Christ. And you need to plug into a local church. You need to follow the Lord in baptism if you make that decision today. It doesn't need to just be a verbal statement. I'm a bodybuilder. That not change anything. It needs to be a life change. But if you're willing to make that decision, then I want you to have the opportunity. It would be a great encouragement, obviously family, if people come to faith in Jesus Christ the day that, that they say goodbye to Tammy. And so, if you would like to pray that prayer, and I want to lead you in that prayer, now, if you would bow with me right now, and honestly, this is between you and God, no one else. If you're ready to make that decision, and just pray, Lord, I love you. God, I know I am not perfect. God, I know that I cannot save myself. But Lord, I know that you love me. You love me enough to give me Jesus to die for my sins. So as best as I know how today, Lord, I ask you to come into my heart and to save my soul. I want to turn from my sin and myself. And I want to turn to Jesus. Save me. In Jesus, amen. As we just bow for another minute, I mean, nobody looking around, just for knowledge to know, and for the opportunity for me just to pray for you, if you want to make, you made that decision today, and you just say, Wayne, hey, I, I prayed that prayer. I, I, I want to trust Jesus as my Savior. I do not have any plan to call anybody's name. Probably don't know your name if you were to raise your hand. Would you just raise your hand and say, I prayed that prayer for you. I prayed the prayer. I, I really want to trust Jesus as my Savior. Anybody? Anyone? Lord, we love you. And I pray for those who may have made the decision. I pray you would strengthen them. Give them the, the wherewithal to actually follow that up and do what you want them to do in following um, in faith in the local church. God, give them strength. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Amen. 